Alright, so I've been asked to make a video about uh, bridge tie tying amplifiers in particular as to if you should bridge tie your amplifiers or not if you have two identical stereo amplifiers and only two one set of stereo speakers It's a fairly interesting question because I haven't dealt much with uh, uh, bridge tying amplifiers before and uh, in particular not uh, with any performance difference you may encounter if you do it compared to running your amplifier single-endedly so I set up uh, an experiment with an old stereo amplifier here in the shop and uh, tried to figure out a few things about bridge tying load and uh, what difference in performance you can expect to see of the amplifier when you run it in bridge tied mode but uh, before before we get onto that I thought we'd just do a quick overview of what we have in our typical stereo amplifier output stage so I've drawn up a bit of a schematic here we've, we've got uh, oh, well a stereo amplifier we've got two output devices per channel running off plus and minus 40 volts and uh, in normal stereo operation you hook your speakers up like that you have one speaker hooked up between amplifier 1 and ground and you have another speaker hooked up between amplifier 2 and ground so what this means is amplifier 1 can use its uh, PMP transistor here to pull the output high which uh, in relation to ground and the speaker sees a positive voltage and moves accordingly and then the amplifier can use its NPN transistor to draw the output low and the speaker moves the other direction because well there's negative voltage applied across it and the same uh, of course applies to both channels because these amplifiers are identical each channel of course has uh, an output impedance here which is say 0.1 of an ohm or something like that so when we hook up in bridge tied mode load mode we essentially do this rather than connecting one speaker between each amplifier and ground we hook up one speaker between each amplifier and in order to get this to work we need to make this amplifier put out the exact opposite of what this amplifier is putting out so we invert the signal going into one of the amplifiers and what we end up with is uh, something like this when the one of the amplifiers swings upward going towards plus 40 volts the other one will swing downwards going towards minus 40 volts and since the speaker has no idea about what's uh, ground ground to it is non-existent it only sees the difference in voltage between the two amplifiers and because this one is putting out plus 40 volts and this one is putting out minus 40 volts the speaker sees a potential difference of 80 volts which results in four times the power you could get out of uh, either of your two stereo speakers before and uh, this is the prime benefit of running a bridge tied load amplifier however in theory there should be some drawbacks as well because we have our output impedances here in single ended mode we only have, have to consider one of them say 0.1 of an ohm speaker ground but uh, now we've got to, to consider both of them we've got uh, 0.1 of an ohm for each amplifier in series with a speaker so in theory we should see a doubling of the output impedance of a bridge tied load amplifier since uh, we also aren't referenced to ground but rather the other amplifier we should also when no signal is present see a doubling in noise because neither of these amplifiers is going to be perfect but they're both going to be noisy and unless the noise coming out of this one is an absolute mirror image of what's coming out of this one 
the noise is going to increase. We are also going to see an increase in power dissipation by the amplifiers because as this one swings upwards and this one swings downwards the current running through the speaker has to increase according to both these while the current increases according to this curve here so the amplifiers will be putting out a lot more current for the same voltage because 40 volts out of this amplifier is 80 volts across the speaker but enough talking let's get to the experiment alright so here's the test jig I'm using this amplifier has two speaker outputs which can be enabled at the same time it's a Pioneer SA330 the best amplifier I've ever owned so what I do is I will connect my load either like that into one of the channels or like this between the channels and these wires here these guys are connected to one channel of my stereo coupling box which then runs onto the HP meter and the other ones there's another red going into the same output and a black one going into the other speaker output and that's where the battery in my camera ran out so I just went ahead and uh, did a couple of tests and as you may notice the Pioneer SA330 that was sitting here has transformed into a Sanyo JCX2 2100LE and that's because I thought that a sample size of one amplifier might uh, yeah, not quite be enough so I fetched another couple this one and my Yamaha 590AX or AX590 and run the tests on them as well and they've produced some numbers so let's crunch them Right, so I plotted the numbers up the old fashioned way, although I did use a calculator. And what we've got are uh, the results for the tests of the Pioneer, single ended and bridged, the Yamaha AX590, single ended and bridged, and the Sanyo JCX2100 LE, single ended and bridged. And over here we've got the averages for all three units and the differences between single ended and bridge tied operation now before you yell at me I do realize that uh, this test would need a larger sample size to be considered valid I'd like to have at least five amplifiers or so tested before I say anything definite about whether or not you should run your amplifier bridged or not but we can spot some general trends from this chart so starting with the THD plus N I measured it at 10 volts into 8 ohms I had a high pass filter at 400 hertz to get rid of some uh, mains hum that would be present in the bridge tied test in particular and my uh, in 80 kilohertz high low pass filter and uh, there's not much of a difference at all really the, the single ended units averaged 0.0215% THD plus N and the bridge tied tests 0.0241 that's about a 1 dB difference but uh, most of it comes from the Pioneer and I redid the test several times on it I'm not quite sure why it distorts this much when it's running in bridge tied load mode because it doesn't have a problem driving 4 ohm loads so yeah this distortion is just an odd artifact but uh, I must admit I have made claims that the THD have should double but this is obviously not the case so I was wrong in that assumption moving on noise this is where I think we spot the biggest difference because the single ended units well tests uh, average 174 microvolts of uh, noise when with uh, shorted input and 296 microvolts when uh, bridged 
and that's a 4.6 dB increase in the noise floor and that's pretty much consistent across all units so I think this is a pretty much the most valid data we've gotten out of this test and that is that the noise floor when you bridge tie an amplifier will increase and it will increase a fair amount as well moving on the output impedance test I did only on the Pioneer and the Sanyo because uh, the Yamaha has a mad damping factor of well over well pretty much a thousand and I can't accurately measure it at the resolution required here so the averages are only for the Pioneer and the Sanyo and they averaged 270 milliohms output impedance single ended and 430 when running bridged and that's a 37% increase in output imp impedance so performance in bridge type mode load mode was considerably worse than performance in single ended mode when it came to output impedance which makes sense moving on power at 0.1% uh, THD plus N 400 hertz low pass filter yeah, sorry high pass filter 80 kilohertz low pass filter average power output was 57.3 watts and uh, for the single ended units and 175.3 watts for the uh, bridge tied load uh, units well tests I keep calling them units so that's not right and how that's a 4.85 dB increase in power so we can see that we pretty much have the same increase in noise floor and power so you end up with pretty much the same dynamic range but since your noise floor is higher when you're running a bridge type mode load I can't say that correctly now can I in bridge tied screw it when you're running bridged so you're going to end up with a hissier system when nothing's playing than if you ran single-ended but you are going to have a lot more headroom if you need the power however even though the difference in distortion is pretty much within the noise floor of this test I can't say that I would recommend running in bridge tied bridged mode unless you need absolutely need that extra power because you are hurting your damping factor which I consider to be one of the most important aspects of an amplifier well its performance anyhow and you are increasing your noise flow which is the second thing well this is actually the most important thing in my book this is the second most important thing so it's really a trade-off do you want to uh, fidelity because this thing can affect that audibly I would even claim or do you want your extra output power? You should also keep in mind that uh, when you are running your amplifier in bridge tied in bridged mode, each amplifier will only see see half the load impedance of a speaker. So you're essentially running well for the amplifier case you're running two four ohm speakers if you're running one eight ohm in bridge bridge mode so depending on your amplifier that might or might might not put more stress on it but yeah I would love to rerun this test with a bigger sample size sometime perhaps I'll wrap up a few more amplifiers sometime and do it because this is fairly interesting I I am baffled by this I would have a, a bet money that there would have been pretty much twice as much distortion in the bridge tied unit but apparently that's not the, the case there is no difference yeah I hope you found this video enlightening until next time cheerio